Coming to you live from the Cowboys headquarters in Frisco, deep in the heart of Texas, it's the Star at Night! Wow, dramatic much? Why are you getting in the way of my intro? You mean our intro? We're your hosts. I'm Kelsey Charles. And I'm David Hellman. Okay, let's just start this show now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to an edition of The Star at Night. We're your hosts, Kelsey Charles and David Hellman. Dave, um, I don't know about you, but I'm not feeling too great coming off this weekend. I'm sitting like this to disguise my sense of unease and my sense of foreboding <laughs> about where we are right now. All right, so. At least I feel comfortable. Where we are. I, I should say I look comfortable. You do look comfortable. Thank you. But this Dallas Cowboys team lost to the Arizona Cardinals on Sunday. And I need to hear from you, David, how concerned we all should be. Because let's face it, there are a couple elements of that game that uh, were less than impressive. A How's couple, that? a couple elements. The whole thing played out in a way of what people have been afraid of for the last month. That's what makes it so terrifying is all of those concerns came to light in one game. All right, well, let's just go ahead and dive in and roll up our sleeves and dig into a little bit, if you will. Let's start with the offense, okay? I mean, this was probably the number one thing that I personally came out of this game being concerned about. They looked sloppy with seven points through three quarters. I mean, it was just... It was uh, nothing to even go yeah, phone home about at all. Not much of a word for it, is no, there? No, I don't. No. They looked like they never played that Washington game, which, where are all my momentum people at? Where are all my rhythm people? Because the momentum and the rhythm that was supposed to be established beating the crap out of Washington did not manifest itself in this game. No. You go to halftime with one touchdown. You don't get rolling till the fourth quarter. Reminded me a lot of the Thanksgiving loss to Las Vegas where it took you three quarters to get in gear. I don't blame anybody that's concerned about this offense's inability to consistently drive the field. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely one of those things where I looked at guys like Dak who were just making errant throws and plays that just felt very uncharacteristic. You know, the big Zeke run gets called back because of a Dalton Schultz penalty. I mean, it just felt all around like it. no one really had a great game. Let's be honest. And again, that... If you are feeling uneasy today, the reason why is because it did look characteristic. It looked characteristic of what we've seen since the bye week. If it wasn't Dak with a bad throw, it was a drop over the middle. If it wasn't a penalty, it was bad blocking. Like, they just couldn't get on the same page until it was too late. Not to mention being all excited about Michael Gallup getting that great touchdown. And then, of course, like, in – True fashion per this game, at least, he tears his ACL. I mean, it was just like, we can't have nice things, can we? It's such a bummer for a guy as great as Mike. Hey, rooting for a recovery for you, my dude. Amazing catch. He tore the ACL before he came down with that oh, catch. Oh, really? Yes. He made it. He tore it on the jump up to come down with that amazing effort by him, but... All things considered, it's about the best thing I can say from an otherwise sloppy, sloppy performance. All right, well, let's talk about the other side of the ball here for a minute because this Cowboys defense, I think we've talked about it. We felt like they have, quite frankly, uh, carried this team. And based on what we're looking at, statistics-wise at least, they didn't have a turnover in this game, so it felt like they didn't really truly have some of their best showing. But here's here's a fun fact for you. The Cowboys are 1-3 uh, and three this season when they only cause one one turnover and they're also zero and two when there's none so yeah. is it really all on the defensive shoulders to keep this team in the game well and they're also losing the turnover battle in some of those games like games where they aren't getting one where the offense is giving the ball up one or two times the thing for me is I, I know this sounds weird the defense played well enough to win like 25 points from Kyler Murray and a 10 win Cardinals team yeah. you'll take that every single time but again it goes back to what have we been saying for the last month it's not going to be Mike Glennon forever it's not going to be Taylor Heineke forever you don't play quarterbacks backs like that in the playoffs the defense was solid but they were getting turnovers and sacks in chunks they get one sack on Sunday and no takeaways it was good enough but it wasn't dominant it's hard to dominate a guy like Kyler Murray, and that's who you're going to see in the postseason. So they either need to step it up to an even higher level or, more realistically, the offense needs to play a much better game. All right, so um, obviously it wasn't the best game that we've seen thus far, but uh, we've got a bit of a shot of truth for you all. Yeah, so stay we do. tuned for that coming up next. 
Cowboys Star at Night is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys, AT&T, and by Favor, the official on-demand food delivery partner of the Dallas Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. Hey, Aaron, can I get another beer? Aaron. Sorry, Aaron's gone. Caden, what are you doing behind the bar? Well, uh, let's just say that Cardinals game really affected Aaron. It actually affected all of Cowboys fans, if you can't tell lately. He quit? Yeah. Over the course of one game? What are you talking about? I mean, that was a pretty bad loss, Dave. A lot of fans aren't taking it that well. I take it Aaron didn't teach you how to pour before he left, either. Good lord. No. What? Oh, God, all right, just walk me through this. So, they're 11-5. and five. They won the East. They got the whole postseason out in front of them. And one game, everybody's just jumping ship? I mean, Dave, that's probably the best team they've played in a long time, and they looked like crap the first three quarters. I mean, it was the offense, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it looks pretty bad, Dave. You're supposed to be getting ready for the playoffs. They don't look playoff ready to me. Last time I checked, the regular season's not over, though, right? <sighs> there's no va there's no value in beating a playoff team in Philadelphia. There's no value in that for you. It's the Eagles, though. Are they really? I mean, I get it, but who is the who have the Eagles beaten? Give me that. Look, I understand, okay? It's it's easy to lose a little bit of confidence with what we saw. It's the best team they're gonna play until the postseason starts. But look around you, man. With the exception of maybe Green Bay, who's not playing for three weeks, by the way. They've got the bye. Forget about them. Who else do you feel confident about in this NFC? Well, Tampa Bay did struggle with the Jets and the Tampa Rams. Tampa Bay barely back. beats the Jets. Antonio Brown quit on the team, by the way. Who's playing wide receiver for the Buccaneers? Who else we got? Who else we got? The Rams uh, haven't looked good with Matt Stafford. Rams lately. almost lost to Tyler Huntley in Baltimore the other day. Matt Stafford's just begging to give the ball away. And you're trying to tell me they lose by three to Arizona? You don't think they could give them better effort at home in two weeks? Uh, I've just I've been burned too many times, Dave. That's what it's all about, Caden. That's what it's all about. People are just afraid to get their hopes up. They don't want to get burned. Well, guess what? It's going to happen anyway. You're in it, baby. We're two weeks away from the playoffs. Talking down like they're not any good, it's not going to make you feel any better when the playoffs get here. But guess what? They're a talented team. I know I sound like a homer saying that right now, but Green Bay is probably the only team in the NFC right now that is a significant step up from this Cowboys team. So just take a deep breath, maybe grab a beer. Mm. There it is, Caden. There's that confidence I need. Get some of that liquid courage. We're on the ride, man. All you can do is see it through to the end. Maybe it'll be a little bit better than we think. I'm feeling good now, Dave. Thank you. Hey, you're supposed to make me feel better, bartender. That's, that's what I get coming here, but hey, you know what? Not a bad start, and when we come back, we're gonna solve some of the other Cowboys' ills. We'll be right back after this. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. You're home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. This segment is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. All right, David, so uh, you use Twitter.com frequently. Frequently. Correct. And that being said, we're going to run you through a very fun and brief exercise. Love Twitter on weeks like this. It's so much it's fun. It's not a toxic place not at all. Not toxic at all. So let's just dive in. I'm going to give you a tweet and then a couple options to fill in the blank, and then uh, we'll discuss. Seems fair? I can't wait. It's not like I've spent my whole week doing this anyway. <laughs> All right. So, Bruce Caden, let's get the first one up here, please. All right. So, uh, this person, I can't even read because I'm old and decrepit at this point. But I believe that's AZ Boys fan. AZ Boys fan. So, you says, know he's mad. Bottom line, <laughs> we don't blank. Run the ball enough. Do anything right. Beat teams with winning records. I'm going to out producer Caden. I do know the answer to this because I've been prepping for it because... <laughs> 
it pisses me off. Like this talking point is not as interesting as people think it is. The answer is C. It's beat teams with winning records. <laughs> and here's Correct. The, do you all understand the way that this league works? No. Like only like 12 teams finish with a winning record. <laughs> it's hard to beat teams with winning records. The Cowboys are three and four against teams with winning records. Not great. Guess what? New England's four and four. Indianapolis is five, four and five. The LA Rams, who I'm sure everybody thinks would kick the Cowboys' ass right now, are three and four against teams with winning records. The Bills are like three and five. The Buffalo Bills, who are going to win the AFC East, it's hard to beat teams with winning records, and most teams don't. Sorry. I don't know, like, cool. What you're saying is healthy competition is what the NFL is all about. It's the most even league in the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would have been awesome if they won the game. Don't get me wrong. It's not surprising that they didn't. All right. Well, um, let's move on to the next one. I hope you're equally as fired up with this one. I don't know the answer to this one. So All right. So uh, here's here's one. Uh, yeah, Mike were, needs an award for, for the first blank ever. Time management usage of herky jerky. Great phrase, by the way. And see Which poker face. He did say herky jerky about ten times <laughs> on Monday. I think that was like his subtle way of saying the refs sucked in that game. Yes. Which is fair. Okay. I'm going to guess time management. That'd be my guess. Probably here. because the fumble came back to bite him at the end. Yep, no hey. timeouts left. Yeah. Hey, oh, two for two. Way to go. Do you agree, though? I feel like this has been a talking point all season, at least in the media. I do. Like, I think Mike made a few mistakes, like the, the gaff on the field goal where you had to call timeout because yep. you weren't sure if they're going to kick or not. Yeah, it definitely wasn't clean. But the thing with the fumble, I'm sorry. It shouldn't be Mike McCarthy's fault that he had to call a timeout an hour ago, and that's why you don't get to review a close call like that. Like, that shouldn't be the way that this works. You should just college football rules. review every – review it all. College, how does college football get this right, but pro football sucks so bad at it? So, look, I'm not trying to, like, completely absolve Mike McCarthy. I thought there were some mistakes on Sunday – that's not one of them. That's just crappy rules on the NFL's part. Wasn't it like 2.40 left when he used the last timeout, though? Like, that, I think a lot of people were just saying, like, it's so close to when you could actually use well, it. Well, but you've also, like, you've got to consider that the two-minute warning is like a timeout, so you want to call that timeout and still be able to use the two-minute warning. How's Mike McCarthy supposed to know that a game-turning fumble is going to happen 40 seconds before the two-minute warning, which, by the way, the referees are gonna referee. if 40 seconds go by, then you magically look at it. They're like, this is not okay at 240, but at 158, we're looking at it. It's asinine, and I hate it. <laughs> All right. Well, we are getting our money's worth this segment out of this one. Okay, let's move on to the next Fired one. Fired up. Uh, here we go. Young Angel, Young Lion. <laughs> this looks like my Zanga name, right? We, like I'm laughing at the choices more so we than the We all name. know that was a blank delay of game, B fumble, and C fart from the booth. How would we know if there was a fart in the booth? <laughs> also, yeah, Young Angel, Young Lion sounds like something you would come up like with. Like hashtag like chocolate eyes with the Z and the Sunsets and selfies. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I mean, I'm going to guess it's B. We all, it was a fumble. It yes. was a fumble. Everyone knows, but yes. it, it's not going to help the Cowboys now. All right, let's go. Oh, I love a good emoji usage. I respect it. Quality. Yeah, I mean, it was a fumble. But do you feel like in general, how controversial was the officiating of this game? And do you feel like, listen, yeah, that was a bad call, but like Micah Parsons said, don't leave it in the hands of the referee. Yeah, I, I don't care about the flags. The Cowboys lost the flag battle 10 to seven. There were some questionable calls. Guess what? The refs have sucked all season. Like, and that's not just the Cowboys. That's every game in the league. They've just been bad this year. So I don't really want to hear that. That's just sort of something you have to deal with in the NFL right now. But, the, but this, this is easily avoidable. This is not something that should happen in a league that's worth however many billion the NFL is worth. That's my problem more so than with the flags. I'm uncomfortable with this call in a big way. I don't like it. It's just not good. I don't it's like really it. Not good. I okay. hope I hope somebody offers to pay Demarcus Lawrence is fine because he's probably going to get one for posting about it on Instagram. Yeah, it's totally fine. All right, so uh, let's talk about something that triggers me personally, and that is the special <laughs> teams unit. Oh, so, it's Scooter. Oh, guys, Scooter Magruder. Scooter Magruder. Scooty, he said, we will lose a playoff game because of uh, blank. Oh. So, play calling Anthony Brown and Greg Zerline. I think I just gave it away. Got to be Greggy Z. Yeah. I mean, even if you hadn't said that, like, 
Anthony Brown, maybe not his best game on Sunday. That ain't why they lost. Greg Zerline, you can make the case. And I am, look, I'm the one that doesn't normally worry about this. Like, extra points, it's hard for me to get fired up about. 43-yard field goals indoors. Yes. Against playoff caliber teams. Again, to go back to my guy, AZ, boys fan. Right. Against teams with winning records, you have to make kicks like that. You have one job. It's it's troubling. I know, like, just sound off, Kels. I know how you feel about it. 28 this. for 34 on field goals, 36 and off, out of 41 on extra points this season. I just feel like I really do think special teams is a mental game. Um, I think we got really spoiled when it came to having a guy like Dan Bailey on our team. He basically was Justin Tucker before Justin Tucker, right? And so it's just one of those things. Like, I'm not sure that this kind of consistency exists in the league right now outside of Tucker. Other than Justin Tucker. To be quite frank. So I don't know the solution because I'm not happy with what I have right now, but I also don't know where I can get anything better. So I think I'm going to go cry in the corner, basically. I think the solution is to cross your fingers and hope for the best. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, cross our fingers because this Dallas Cowboys team is taking on the Philadelphia Eagles this weekend. We're going to talk about if we think they should rest or play some of their key players. Stay with us. This segment is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. All right, David, so I will not put you on full blast. But I will say, the Dallas Cowboys are about to play your other favorite team come this weekend. That's that's rich. My <laughs> other favorite team. I'm just saying. Look, I've got. He friends. might be an undercover fan a little bit. I've got friends in Philadelphia. Yeah. I don't look. I am. I operate on a higher plane. Let me dig out of this real quick. Lowly divisional okay. rivalry. That's stuff. really, really. That's that's really amazing of you. Congratulations for that. All right. So um, they are playing the Eagles this weekend. This, so go ahead and take a look at this really quickly before we dive in. They got a pretty significant list of people that are on the reserve COVID-19 list. Yeah, they got themselves a nice little outbreak here. I, I mean, because of the new protocols, a lot of these guys could still wind up playing. Five days. But when you consider that the playoffs are on the horizon and they already have a spot, I'm not going to be surprised if a lot of these guys don't suit up on Saturday night. Okay, so I want to talk about that for a minute because that's a topic of conversation that actually you brought up on the social media machine this past week. And um, I want to know, realistically speaking, with both these teams securing their playoffs positions, does it make sense to, you know, I don't know, maybe have a little rush hour action this weekend? Well, speaking of the uh, speaking of the fun of social media after a loss, somebody <laughs> said I should be fired for this opinion. So I'm going to tread lightly here. Look, because of the way the NFL is structured, like this isn't college football where you can sit all 22 of your starters anyway. That's not my point. But the Cowboys, I think you do have to keep in mind that your options are limited here. Like, yes, you can climb up to a higher seating, but that's not in your control. And so you think about that, you have a chance to rest an Ezekiel Elliott who's been banged up, a Tyron Smith who's got an ankle injury. Maybe even throw in Tony Pollard who's been dealing with a sprained foot. They have to play because of the roster constraints. Sure. But you can get them some time off. Maybe pull some of these guys at halftime in the third quarter. Do I want Dak out there playing in the dying minutes of the fourth quarter? Not really. Not for me. Right. Is there anyone who you are just solely saying, listen, love ya. you. Can need, you need to take a seat the entire game. He would be pissed, and I apologize to him. But that man right there, Micah Parsons. Sorry, buddy. You're not going to get the rookie sack record. You're too important to the playoffs. <laughs> I'm, I know, like, that'll never happen. I, I couldn't, I would love to see that conversation if the Cowboys try to talk to him about it. I just think, again, you have to play people to get through the game, but this is a time to be smart and preserve your roster heading into the postseason. Okay, if there was an argument for playing, though, and just, you know, this is a normal game, we're going to go out and sure. play our guys, like, what is it? And uh, th that's a valid argument because. They need to get out there and get reps. The offense in particular, after that showing, you want to improve your communication. Maybe doing so in a hostile environment at Lincoln Financial helps you kind of get clicking a little bit. I get that. And, and that's why I think they should play. Just maybe not the whole game. All right. Maybe so, not the whole thing. Uh, speaking of the Eagles, you will never believe what happened to them this past weekend. We're going to show you that a little bit more coming up next.
Cowboys Star at Night was brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. AT&T. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Dave, we all know that I love to laugh at the expense of our NFC East foes. And this is no different, especially because the outcome, well, it wasn't awful. And it really could have been. Could have been. What in the FedEx field is going on here? You really scared me with what in the F. But I look, I've been to this place. <laughs> it only opened in 1997. It is a dump. Bad. There's poop water coming from the ceilings. The railings are falling over. Figure it out. Good on Jalen Hurts. That, that warms my heart. These these guys could have ended his season, and he not only helps him up, but like poses with him. I I know he plays for the Eagles, but yeah, I like Jalen Hurts, man. Yeah, I mean, listen, you can like a player and hate the team, but I can't help but look at that and be a little nervous about just you know the nature of our health situation right now and how. All these fans are like falling on Get this jab, major baby. important player. So Get the jab, baby. Anyways, no a little COVID anxiety. Out there. No, no. Hey, it all worked out. All's well that ends well. But any opportunity I can get to say FedEx Field sucks is one well taken. Thanks for watching the Star at Night. I'm Dave. She's Kelsey. We'll be back.